So one of the first screening tools we can do with our athletes is a simple overhead squat with a PVC pipe, just like they do in the functional movement screen. Uh, this will give us information if we have any major restrictions in the shoulder joint, the knees, ankles, or the hips, uh, and any compensations that might occur. If we aren't ready and we have display poor competency with an overhead squat, uh, we'll work on remedial exercises, perhaps a goblet squat, uh, isometric holds, body weight variations, squats to box, before progressing to a more complex movement like a back squat, front squat, or a loaded overhead squat. If we do display competencies, the first thing I'll do with my athletes is teaching them the position of our shoulder joints and our elbows and upper limbs uh, in accordance with the bar. So the first thing I'll do is have them balance with the barbell on their deltoids. They're going to extend their arms. And they're going to try to keep that barbell there without letting it roll forward as we slowly descend into a full squat, hold, and come back up. So we're balancing that PVC pipe the whole time. So Chelsea, I want you to do the same thing as I just did. I want you to support the PVC pipe on your shoulders with your arms out in front of you just like a zombie. Good, and we're gonna to try to keep that PVC pipe where it is. If you drop your arms, the PVC pipe's gonna roll forward. We have to try to keep it in the same position. You're gonna squat all the way down to the bottom. Good, good, good. Keeping nice and stable, upright back, and then come back up. Good, let's do two more repetitions. All we're looking for here is the maintenance of our arms to be parallel to the floor and the bar to stay in roughly the same position. Good, our last one. We have a nice, normal lordosis and a good spine. So once we've taught athletes the awareness of their limbs in space and where they should be in accordance with the barbell or the PVC pipe, we move straight to a front squat uh, unloaded. So the first thing we'll do is make sure that our grip is shoulder width. We just want to make sure our grip is appropriate if we need to do any overhead variation, be it a press or a jerk variation. So too narrow, it's not going to be ideal. Too wide, it's going to be potentially difficult for the mobility of the shoulder joint. Take the shoulder width grip, step under the bar, ensuring my midfoot is underneath the bar before I unwrap the barbell. I'm going to point my elbows out in front of me like pistols, bar resting on my deltoid, stand up, and in a position squat. In this position, we're ensuring that we, if possible, we can have all our fingers wrapped around the barbell. If we have athletes with limited wrist extension, we can detach fingers, but as a priority, we're trying to maintain full contact as we have a wider base of support and also the living throughout the system. From here, I'm keeping my elbows pointed as high as I can, making sure I prop my shoulders up, creating a shelf for the bar. From here, I'm gonna squat as low as I can, pointing my elbows out in front of me, trying to keep my triceps parallel to the floor before standing up. As a way of explaining to my athletes the role of the wrists, the hands, and the shoulder in supporting the barbell, I will detach my hands, and pointing out that the barbell does not move from me attaching my hands to the end to putting them out in front. And that I can still squat comfortably without putting my hands on. So the reason why we want to demonstrate the importance of resting the barbell on our shoulders and our deltoids is that if we have athletes complaining of wrist pain, the usual culprit is supporting too much of the load there or limited mobility in the wrist joint or potentially the muscles that could the, cross the shoulder joint. Typically, if we have tight lats or tight external rotators, uh, we won't be able to get into the positions we want. Uh, as an alternative, with some athletes that have excessive wrist demands, be it an overhead throwing athlete or a golfer, we might use straps around the middle as a way of circumventing those issues. Uh, but ideally, we still want to make sure every athlete possesses the global movement, movement competencies uh, to perform every lift correctly. Good, so Chelsea, I want you to step underneath the bar so your shoelaces are underneath it. Good, from here I want you to take a sh just outside shoulder width grip. Good, I want you to wrap your elbows underneath and point them in front of you as high as you can. Good, we're maintaining a full grip on the barbell. From here I want you to stand up, take one to three steps backwards. Good, so keeping your elbows pointed up nice and high, I want you to sit down as low as you can. Bar resting on our shoulders, good, and stand up. Good, let's do two more repetitions. Good. We notice that our elbows are pointing directly out in front of us, our triceps are parallel to the floor, and the load is supported on the shoulders and not the wrists. So one of the most common errors we see is the athlete supporting the barbell too much in their hands or their wrist and upper body. So what this might look like, 
is an athlete's inability to be aware of the correct position or an inability to maintain the correct position through mobility requirements and restrictions. So if we have an athlete like this or like this, will tend to complain of wrist pain and it's not a great position to support heavier loads in any of the overhead movements or continuing to add intensity to our front squat. If we have an athlete who's unaware or unable to recognize the position that the bar should be in, we can regress back to our hold with our arms in front and we can do isometric holds at the bottom of our squat position. So what that might look like is our hands here. We're going to extend our hands in front of us, making sure that we're in the correct position on top of my delta. I'm going to sit at the bottom of the squat and hold this position. So we can do this for time, for a certain amount of reps. Once the athlete is comfortable in position, stand up, turn our hands for support, and we'll jump to the rack. It's very important that we don't use any load in this exercise. It's simply to create awareness of where the load should be distributed across the front of our shoulder. An inability to create that correct position for our front rack and our front squat might be due to a limitation in our lats, our internal and external rotators, uh, or potentially even our tricep. Any muscle that crosses the wrist, elbow, or shoulder joint uh, may have a role in our ability to maintain or not maintain that position. We're addressing the tightness of the internal rotators, a uh, stretch I like to use, is taking a supinated grip on the PVC pipe and creating some external rotation in the shoulder joint. This movement is very specific to the positional demands of a front rack position. We can do this in a static uh, hold manner or we can do a proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretch or a PNF stretch where you might contract and relax against our own resistance from the other hand. If we have a limitation on some of the muscles across the wrist joint, specifically at the extensors or the flexors of our wrist, we can simply do a static hold stretch just like so, making sure I'm trying to work my wrists further and further in front of me, sink my body down. Okay. This can be done in a static manner. We can also use self myofascial release techniques like a lacrosse ball, a foam roller, or even something like the barbell. Come over here. Here we can roll out the tight structures that might be limiting the range of motion in our wrist. And we can do this before, after, during training, in between sets, whenever is the most appropriate for our athletes and the time demands. We have Another technique we might want to use as part of our warm-up, activation drills, or even in between sets of exercises can be some self myofascial techniques uh, for the lats and the shoulders that might uh, the, the structures that might cross the shoulder joint. So from here we might start under the armpit. Our hand is in an externally rotated position. The shoulder is flexed, and all I'm going to do is work my way up and down my rib cage from the origin of the lats all the way to the insertion. I can rotate over the ball to hit different corners or also rotate backwards to hit tighter bits. We want to encourage the athletes to stay in a range of motion that's tolerable but slightly uncomfortable. It, the movement should not cause extreme pain. We want to pay special attention to areas that are tight specifically for them, whether that be closer to the insertion of a muscle or closer to the origin. There's no wrong way to do it, just better ways of finding what works best for you. This is probably one of my favorite mobilization techniques specific for the front rack position where you're keeping a mini band just proximal of the elbow joint. It's going to bring our elbows closer together. From here, we're going to take a wide grip on the PVC pipe to put ourselves in an externally rotated position. I'm trying to keep my elbows close together as I drop myself into shoulder flexion. Okay, I'm keeping my spine extended and gradually working my way in external rotation through a flexed and extended position. As I get more comfortable, I can take a wider grip on the PVC pipe and work my elbows in narrower. I can additionally increase the demands on the shoulder joint by going into elbow flexion and increasing the amount of torque around the shoulder joint. I'm essentially trying to bring the PVC pipe to my forehead, working my way through different ranges of motion in the shoulder joint. This can be done in a more dynamic fashion or in a static fashion, again before, during or after training, depending on the mobility requirements of the athlete and their competencies in the front squat position.